Um, yeah, I'm going to be talking about some work we've been doing at the University of uh, Edinburgh in collaboration with some other universities on compiling uh, linear algebra microkernels directly to uh, a RISC-V accelerator using only MLIR. So the idea is we take something that can be expressed in this uh, Einstein um, summation notation on the left all the way to this kind of like pictographic illustration of um, a pairwise summation on device on the right. And we're dealing only with a very restricted domain, so only fairly simple and small linear algebra uh, operations. And the idea is that we want to get optimal hardware utilization by leveraging the structured input and preserving the high-level semantic information all the way through the compilation pipeline. So just to kind of set the scene, here's the way that you might implement that in C. And uh, you have a couple of pointers uh, as inputs, and you have a pointer output. So you want to pairwise add each element of x and y and store it to z. And the thing that is slow in here is the loop management and the um, address offsets. And quite a lot of chips spend up to like 90% of the uh, area optimizing them using caches and branch predictions and things like that, basically because they can't introspect into the meaning behind your code. But uh, we can do better. Here is what LLVM compiles that function to. So you can see there's inside the loop a bunch of uh, code to actually compute the memory addresses to load them and to store them. And also there's some um, addition for the loop counter and some branching. Um, so we're going to try to improve that specifically for this snitch um, accelerator, which is an extension to RISC-V with um, two special features. One is hardware loops, and that's um, to optimize the loop operations and streaming registers, which let us um, uh, simplify the reading and writing to memory. And so the state of the art today is that there's no compiler that can target them automatically. What uh, you have to do is um, actually, yeah, you have to write some fairly complicated code to do it. So just to explain what the streaming register is, so here I have this little emoji animation of a pairwise addition of two vectors. One is blue, one is red. We want to get purple as a result. So we take the two. Uh, first elements, we add them and we store them to the first output um, position. Then we do that again. We get them at the offsets and we store it at the offset. We get the offsets, we store it at the offset, and so on. But if we change our frame of reference, we can uh, kind of pretend that we're doing the addition in place. So we can kind of start here and do the addition and the storage exactly in place and just let the hardware uh, load and store to the right place. So we kind of just kind of uh, stay in place and the hardware does the job for us. And this is what that looks like in the assembly. So the first um, thing that's kind of, um, I've omitted the actual setup and the teardown code for it, but you can see that the loop implementation itself is much, much shorter and it has no uh, storing and loading uh, logic in it. And you have this same um, double addition operation from the RISC-V uh, instruction set. But um, the registers actually change the values each time that you read from them and you store to them. The next thing is um, this snitch floating point repetition instruction. Uh, and there's no animation here. It just instead of doing this thing five times, you just tell it, do it five times, right? So it's pretty simple. And this is what the same code looks like. As a result, there is no loop. There is just this uh, configuration. You uh, tell it, hey, this is how many times I want to repeat 
uh, the next instruction, and it does it for you. And this is kind of modular the comments, the actual code that you would run. Um, and this is what the performance looks like uh, after those two kind of introductions uh, with the standard kind of LLVM output. Uh, it's pretty slow, and the assembly we have written by hand is pretty fast. Um, so how do we actually generate that assembly? The current state of the art is the C with um, all these special library calls and inline assembly, and that to me is pretty scary, right? There's no compiler support if you have any bugs, um, and you have to have all this domain knowledge of how to set up your accelerator core. So it's pretty expensive and brittle to write. Uh, it's not ideal. Uh, but what if we actually start with the high-level information um, directly encoded in our IR? So this is the Linalg representation of the same operation. So we have a couple of uh, memrefs, and we have this uh, uh, inner loop that adds the two uh, scalars from each memref and uh, writes the sum uh, to the uh, output memref. And instead of going through a fine and uh, all the way down to LLVM, what we're actually going to do is uh, introduce our own uh, stream dialect that lets us do this directly. So the loop body is exactly the same, but now instead of this kind of buffer abstraction, we can use the stream abstraction and um, kind of put this setup code uh, up front and keep our body exactly the same. From here, we can go directly into kind of this risk five land where we have, uh, instead of being kind of platform agnostic uh, streams, we have these snitch specific streams. And you can see that the body of the function actually changed from being Aerith to risk. So these, this um, risk five FAD corresponds exactly to our assembly operation that we want at the end. And the stream generic um, still represents our loop, but we've uh, got these read and write um, operations there. Uh, next, we can lower to the runtime dialect that corresponds to the uh, C library that we saw before. And uh, that simplifies uh, things a bit. I've kind of emitted some of the code, but you can see that uh, we've got these kind of things that correspond to the C library calls from before. Uh, one thing that we need to do is register allocation. And so that also becomes much, much simpler because of our domain. So, and because of the way that we've structured our code, right? So we're still in a pretty structured uh, space and we can leverage the SSA structure of the code as well to make that pretty trivial. So here, it's exactly the same code from before, but we've allocated the only register that wasn't allocated before. It's this like in the load immediate. You might think this is the least impressive like register allocation slide I've ever seen. And it's mostly because just the domain is so easy that there's not that much to do, right? Uh, from there, we can uh, lower all the way to the um, uh, this uh, risk five function call that uh, respects the um, uh, the calling convention and this frep outer um, that corresponds to the frep dot o instruction in the assembly, and that's basically it. We've uh, uh, made the compilation and we can output the assembly direction uh, uh, directly and get exactly the same performance as we did with our handwritten code. Uh, that's it. <laughs>